Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From giant horseflies cutting your skin to getting a nasty pinch from an ant, here are nine insect bites you should be able to identify. Number nine, horsefly bites. If you live in a region with horseflies, you definitely know that they are the bane of every fun summer. There is nothing worse than these oversized flies buzzing around, falling into your drink when you're sitting out by the fire, flying straight up your nose, oh, and biting giant chunks out of your skin. Horseflies are no laughing matter. They are a menace, and their bite hurts. The bite from a horsefly is actually more painful than most other insect bites, besides obviously from a spider and maybe a scorpion. Well, actually, they don't bite, but they cut your skin and lick up the blood. You can identify the horsefly bite first from the searing pain you will feel as it uses scissor-like action to create a wound in the skin. It also has small hooks along its mouth parts that it uses to grab on. The bite is usually red, surrounded by a raised area of skin, and along with the pain and this type of mark, called a wheel or a hive, it will help you recognize this bite. Nasty, isn't it? Keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't get infected. If it hurts more in a day or two, be sure to go see a doctor. While they don't necessarily transmit diseases to humans, they can transmit a disease called swamp fever, which can be fatal to horses. Number 8. Bee Stings This may be an unpopular opinion, but I love bees, especially bumblebees. My father has a great garden with lots of lavender, and the bees love it. However, many people are scared of bees, and rightly so. Bee stings can deliver a nasty punch and can easily be identified by the stinger still stuck inside your skin. After you pull it out, your skin will get red and a little swollen. But like many of these, it's just a local reaction, and if you wash it with soap and water and put some ice on it, you should be fine. Most people will be fine in a few hours, but other people have serious allergic reactions to bees. Some people can even go into anaphylactic shock. But it is not necessarily a single bee sting that is the most dangerous, but multiple bee stings. A single sting is not enough to cause anyone without allergies to be greatly afflicted. However, Mayo Clinic reports that if you get stung more than a dozen times, so much venom can accumulate in your bloodstream that it could induce a toxic reaction and make you extremely sick. It might get to the point where you are vomiting, having convulsions, are stricken by fever, and eventually faint. If you have breathing problems or a heart issue, and you get stung by more than 12 bees, you better seek an emergency room fast. Honeybees will die when they sting you as they cannot pull out the stinger. When it stings, it will leave behind its stinger as well as part of its digestive tract. Solitary bees, bumblebees, and wasps will not die when they sting you. Even though it is scientifically proven that bees don't attack without feeling threatened, you better take note if you don't want bees near you. Try not to sit close to a hive or to flowers when they are busy getting pollen. Be careful with sweet drinks outside, use open cups to see if a bee is in it, and try not to move vegetation around. Cover food containers and trash cans, and try not to wear bright colors or floral prints. They might get confused. Number 7. Lice Bites do you remember getting lice checks in school? Lice are a very serious menace, especially in schools. According to the CDC, the biggest cause of a lice infection is from close personal contact, such as sharing personal items like clothes, towels, or hats that can spread head lice. Who does this a lot? Kids. And of course, hugging, so school and summer camp is lice heaven. The biggest problem with body lice is that they can transmit diseases such as typhoid and trench fever. These are not diseases you want to be carrying around with you. Head lice, though, is not believed to spread disease. It's just very, very uncomfortable. Lice bites can be identified as small, somewhat bloody dots in places where your hair grows. The bites are generally several inches apart and often staggered, making it look like somebody poked at you a bunch of times with a small needle to draw blood. And of course, your head will itch like crazy. To survive, the adult lice must feed on blood. No need to panic, you don't need to shave your head. You can buy special lice shampoo or even home treatment methods like tea tree oil or butter or mayonnaise to smother them like in the office. You can also supposedly just use lots of regular hair conditioner. And you can comb them out with a knit comb, like a flea comb for dogs and cats, and place them in alcohol to kill them. Have you ever had lice? What cures do you know to get rid of them? The hack of the hair conditioner is less aggressive than using a chemical, and is going to transform your hair into a smooth and silky dream so you can have hair like Rapunzel. And forget about the lice. 
And now for number six, but first, be sure to subscribe if you are new here and let us all know if you've ever been stung or bitten in the comments below. Number six, flea bite. Fleas are similar to bed bugs in that they prey on you often in your sleep, and often with an unrelenting fury. Because fleas can bite multiple times in one night, you often find strings of flea bites up and down your legs anywhere from five inches to one inch apart. I've been there. It sucks. Flea bites are identifiable by the red and swollen spots around the bite's epicenter. They look a little like an allergic reaction or a heavy scattering of mosquito bites, but the itching is ferocious. The bites are extremely painful, and they are way itchier than your average mosquito bite. Fleas can also jump like crazy, and they can jump up to eight feet high vertically. If you are walking by, minding your own business, they will jump on you. These tiny little wingless bugs are so annoying. Healthline reports that fleas tend to bite mostly around the legs and ankles, but you may also find traces of bites around your waist, groin, and armpits. Great! If your legs are covered in bites and nowhere else, I almost guarantee you have fleas. Be sure to wash your sheets, do the laundry, and take care of your pets to protect them and you from these tiny little boogers. Number 5. Hornets and Wasps Nobody wants to be stung by a hornet. It hurts! And it hurts more than a bee or a wasp, kind of as if you were getting stabbed by a red-hot needle. Wasps have a similar sting in which the area will become red and swollen, accompanied by moderate pain and burning, and then followed by relentless itching. The big difference between a wasp and a bee is that a wasp can sting you as many times as it feels like. So if you make wasps or hornets angry, you're in for a nasty surprise. Actually, you shouldn't be surprised because I'm warning you right now, and you might have personal experience. The best way to avoid a hornet or a wasp sting is to ignore it. Don't start swatting at it like a psycho. Just leave it alone and mind your own business, and the hornet is probably not going to concern itself with the likes of some sweaty human, hopefully. Just sit still and cross your fingers. If you are stung by a hornet or a wasp, you'll feel an instant, sharp burning pain at the sting site, and a red welt will form in the sting area. The area around it is generally going to swell and get pink or red and get even bigger over the next couple of days. You may get blistering and feel a burning or searing pain. However, chances are the pain you feel from the swelling after getting stung is worse than the sting itself. You should wash the sting area immediately with soap and water to remove as much of the venom as possible and apply a cold pack to reduce swelling and pain. However, they still have venom, and the venom of large hornets, for example the venom from the Asian giant hornet, is greater than the toxicity of most other stinging insects. A hornet's venom contains acetylcholine and histamine and can be deadly to humans. Also, since hornets are extremely large, they release more of it when they sting you. Unlike honeybees, these insects don't die after stinging. Their stingers are very finely barbed, so they can easily withdraw and aren't pulled out of their bodies when they disengage. They have no problem stinging you multiple times. If you're stung and you start feeling tingly, or if your lips go blue and you have trouble breathing, swelling of the throat and tongue, nausea, or tightness in your chest, it is likely you are allergic to them and you should seek medical attention immediately. Number 4. Tick Bite There is nothing more disgusting than ticks. Ugh. Not only are they scary looking, but they carry so much disease, causing permanent damage. Ticks are attracted to people and animals, and if you like to spend time outdoors, you've most likely encountered a tick or two. Ticks have eight legs and are from the arachnid family, but they only suck blood, making them one of the worst parasites around. There are roughly 200 species of tick just in the USA, living in grass, shrubs, woods, trees, pretty much anywhere in nature. Creepy fact, ticks have been known to literally scramble after people or animals on foot until they reach their leg, at which point they can climb up and take possession of their new host. Tick bites are easily identifiable as a red splotch or a rash on the skin with the tick actually still there. A tick will stuff its entire head into your skin to suck your blood, and it can hang out there for a long time, growing bigger and bigger as it swells up. Ticks will look for warm, damp areas of the body and will bite and stay attached to you so you will know if a tick has bitten you because it will most likely still be there. If you don't remove it, it might stay on you for 10 days. That's absolutely disgusting. If you have a tick, be careful how you remove it or its head might get stuck inside. The CDC recommends using a pair of tweezers to grasp it and pull it straight out without twisting. Don't crush or squeeze it as it can burrow more deeply or leave mouth parts under your skin that can get infected. 
If you have no tick but a raw red spot that is a little itchy, you may have a tick bite. Be careful because ticks can infect people with Lyme disease, borreliosis, and other nasty diseases that can become chronic. These things are pretty horrific. If you have been out hiking or spending time in the woods or grassy areas, be sure to inspect yourself, kids, and pets to remove them as soon as possible. Number 3. Bed Bugs Luckily, I've never experienced bed bugs. Their bites can be easily identified by small red and itchy bite marks all over the place, making it look as though they left a trail behind as they skittered across your skin and fed on your blood. The marks are not like mosquito bites at all. They are red clusters often found along your back, the backs of your arms, and anywhere else that skin was exposed through the night, even your face. Bed bugs are nightly hunters, and you will generally wake up with these itchy red trails in the morning. You can find bed bugs sleeping underneath your mattress, tucked into the seams of your furniture, and even living in the folds of your favorite clothing. To prevent having them in your house, you should vacuum your floors, furniture and appliances, launder your linens, clothing, and use the hottest settings of your washing machine, and heat items that can be safely heated to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. These bugs are not typically very dangerous, but their bites are super itchy. If you wake up with clusters of red, intensely itching bites, yes, you probably have bed bugs. Number 2. Ant Bite Most ants are actually quite harmless, just like the ones in a bug's life. However, if you come upon some aggressive fire ants, bullet ants, or accidentally disturb a nest, you may find yourself under siege by these incredibly strong and resilient insects. While your garden variety ants don't pose much of a threat, a swarm of fire ants suddenly engulfing one of your legs and biting you thousands of times can pose a bit of a problem. The biggest issue, of course, is for people who are allergic, as they can suffer seriously if they have a dangerous allergic reaction. Interestingly, ants do not literally bite you. They generally pinch your skin with their mouth tools and then spit poison on you. Ants are basically a smaller version of the xenomorph from the Alien movie. They literally spit acidic venom from their mouths onto your skin, which then causes a sudden surge of burning pain. These stings are identifiable as swollen red bumps on the skin. You won't find any piercing holes with ant bites. These bites will be instantly painful and usually subside into itching. If you get attacked by ants, some ingredients you can use to relieve the bites are ice, lemon juice, honey, vinegar, baking soda, toothpaste, aloe vera, salt, cucumber, and herbal tea. That's what I've heard anyway. Spread them on your skin and give it some time to heal. Number 1. Mosquito Bites Mosquitoes are arguably one of the most stressful things to have happened to planet Earth since the comet that killed the dinosaurs. Mosquitoes live on every continent except Antarctica. They have killed more human beings by spreading disease than all of the wars combined. They are an unstoppable force of disease transmission and endless hours of scratching. In any case, mosquitoes don't give us any reason to love them. Their bites are identifiable by the raised, itchy welt on the skin and the tiny hole in which the female's gross, needle-like mouth punctured your skin. Oh yes, that's a fun mosquito fact. Only female mosquitoes drink your blood, and they only drink your blood so they may lay their eggs, creating more mosquitoes. This is the circle of life. Some recommendations if a mosquito bites you is use an ice cube or some water with baking soda to help heal. And I know it's hard, but try not to scratch your skin. Your immune system is battling diseases and making a protective layer in the zone, so let them work and protect you from the threats. Thanks for watching! Which of these insect stings are you most familiar with, and which one do you think hurts the most? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe! Stay safe, and I'll see you next time!